David has collected an enormous amount of uh, uh, materials on the history of Pasadena, uh, far beyond his own family. It forms the basis now for the San Jacinto College's local history collection at the Lee Davis Library and its history website, From Ranching to Industry, a photo history of Pasadena. And David also has created and maintains his own Texas history website, Early Texas History. Um, and he's extremely active in what I would call history as direct experience, sort of representing and representing history almost to ourselves as reenactors. Uh, I know from my friend Steve Harden, who wrote the book on the military history of the Texas Revolution, tells me about one of his experiences as a reenactor. Uh, and he, he meant a little more serious uh, subject than just wearing that silly hat that he does from time to time. Uh, and that is that he and, another, he and a group of, uh, of, 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 of more professional reenactors went to the Wainamo, that is to say the Brackettville uh, model of the Alamo that was built for the John Wayne movie in the late 1950s. And what they were doing was very serious. They were they were reenacting the Battle of the Alamo in real time. That is to say, doing it on the morning of March 6th uh, and, uh, and, and sleeping uh, fitfully there inside uh, the Alamo uh, Plaza as reconstructed down on uh, the Rio Grande. And what Steve said was that when they heard the noises suddenly between 5 and 6 in the morning and it was time to get up, well, duh, it was dark. It was really dark. And they weren't using any artificial lighting whatsoever. And he got, as a military historian, he suddenly got a, a, a very strong new sense of what it meant to fight that battle of the Alamo, which if you look at it in the, the John Wayne movie and the Best Parker movie and a lot of other movies, it looks like the middle of the day or a bright afternoon when they're fighting that battle or maybe 10 o'clock in the morning. But these Santa Ana's army were not 10 o'clock scholars. They were up early that morning and they attacked in the dark and that gives the battle a whole different perspective. And so uh, Steve said, and I certainly agree with him, that I, I got a whole new feeling for reenacting. Just firing a cannon whether you're out there doing the work or watching people go through the multiple steps to fire a cannon will give you a whole new appreciation of what it meant. Or going through the 19 steps to load and fire and reload uh, a musket or rifle. Uh, knowing that someone is trying to kill you during steps 1 through 18. Uh, that, you know, that can bring a whole new sense of reality to what it means to fight. So David is, is used to looking at history in the microcosm, and sometimes uh, that is the individual experience. And I, he's also someone who likes to put history under the microscope. I've done a little of that myself, as you'll see if you read that book of mine out there. Sometimes key events have been seriously misunderstood, or key events are the subject of of, of deep controversies uh, and heartfelt controversies. And so sometimes we have to start from scratch and re if not reinvent the wheel, retell ourselves through going back to the most original sources we can find, just what is it that happened? And what David is going to do today is to take us back to one of those controversial key events, and that is Vince's Bridge, uh, the absence of which ruined Santa Ana's already bad day. <laughs> well, he's got me going in too many directions here. Uh, Santa Ana never spoke nicely of Pasadena after that. <laughs> Okay, uh, living history, standing in the middle of a tornado, trying to keep the pegs in your tent down while the storm's blowing through, and you think, I think I know what they felt like. Waking up in the morning and having snow on the ground, and you go, okay, I'm now getting in the mind of these 
uh, soldiers, and I have far greater respect to them each time I come back from an encampment or a reenactment. Let me read my premise, my underlying premise, otherwise I get all messed up here. History is not a dead subject, but it is surprisingly alive. Each year at this symposium, <coughs> newly discovered facts are presented, and new as well as new interpretations. By periodically revisiting our history, its primary sources, and our interpretations, we can ensure a more accurate understanding of our history. Sometimes we get going in the wrong direction, and if we don't go back and check it, we're going to put Vinci's Bridge someplace that it's not. Sometimes a great idea, an exciting idea comes along. Man, this is really great. But then you get to looking at it. Sometimes it's only supported by smoke and mirrors, by desire instead of facts. Okay? And an idea is really a starting point, not an ending point. And today I'll be talking about an example of doing just that, starting with an ending point and then trying to put everything together after that. Before I start, let me just review an old, old, old research top, uh, technique. It's called a map. Gee, if you're dealing with any geography, please get a map. Sketch out the details that you're reading about, and sometimes you'll discover they're going in the wrong direction. Or that doesn't jive with that. The river's not there. It's over there. The mountains are here, not there. And there's some scholars that don't know how to read a map, and therefore there's, there's embarrassment when they finally discover the wrong direction. When I was growing up as a child, life was very, very simple. Coincidentally, living in Pasadena, I lived for a while on Little Vince Bio. Little Vince Bio is, is the one leg of the Vince Creek system. Um, it's a small bio. I had my swimming hole, I had a rope, I could swing out there, drop in the water. It was a small bio. I could wade through it, I could jump over it. So in regular times, it was an insignificant bio. But you get a good rain, and you get all the water trying to run through this little bio. It's got a small opening under the buffalo bio. <coughs> it begins to back up, and it's a pretty treacherous body of water. So I understand uh, some of the history from that perspective. And I know where, or I knew where, the um, Fences Bridge of Texas Revolutionary fame was because in 1912, the Daughters of the Republic of Texas, oh, I'm sorry, the San Jacinto chapter of the Daughters of the Republic of Texas, <laughs> they're always on my case about that. <laughs> See? Okay. Uh, placed a marker there, 1912. So uh, I knew where it was. Now, we're all avid 1836 historians here, and perhaps even some of you are pretty good experts on Vince's Bridge. But for the benefit of all of you, let's sort of run through the history of what was the significance of Vince's Bridge. Okay, this is the route. The last six days of the Texas Revolution happened in this area. If you look at the route, the blue line starting at the top, what is it going to be, your left coming down? is the, the uh, Texas government that came to Harrisburg, stayed there for a while. When they discovered Santa Ana was coming after them, so they got on their boats and they left, followed the blue line, they went down to Galveston. Santa Ana is the dark green line. He comes up from Thompson's Crossing, down here, comes to, San Antonio, uh, comes to uh, Harrisburg, ah, he missed the government by 12 hours. Okay, so he spends the night, next day he sends uh, Al Monte, he says, hey, about five o'clock in the afternoon, by the way, he sent Almani, he says, okay, you can see if you can find some stragglers. So Almani starts out, and he took the dark green line, crossed Vince's Bridge, went to New Washington, just missed the government again. Two days later, Santa Anna said, okay, burn Harrisburg, we're going to New Washington, that's where all the good food is. So he heads off, dark green line, he crosses Vince's Bridge. As soon as he gets to New Washington the next day, Sam Houston shows up opposite Harrisburg because he heard Santa Ana's at Harrisburg with not a lot of troops. So Santa Ana's, Sam Houston's come up, coming behind Santa Ana, and the blue line where he comes in opposite 
Harrisburg. He looks and says, uh-oh, it's burning. He crosses Buffalo Bio, crosses Vince's Bridge, goes to San Jacinto, and arrives just a few hours ahead of Santa Ana. So now the stage is set. But Sam Houston is not going to engage Santa Ana because he's already intercepted dispatches, and he knows that General Coase, Mexican General Coase, is bringing 500 reinforcements. General Coase, which is the light green line, takes the traditional road up to Harrisburg, then goes on over to San Jacinto, and uh, arrives on the morning of April the 21st, at which time Sam Houston sent Def Smith down to destroy Vince's Bridge because all three armies crossed Vince's Bridge. So now, with superior forces, Santa Ana says, <laughs> Sam Houston didn't fight this morning. I got more men than he does. <laughs> I'm going to go take a nap. Sam Houston, noticing this window of opportunity, immediately starts a surprise attack. And when they jumped up yelling, remember the Alamo, remember Goliath, 18 minutes later, they were in, through, and over the Mexican barricade, and the war was over. Santa Ana discovered this very quickly, got on a horse, and most of his cavalry people were heading back to Thompson's Cross and where Phil Sola had 2,500 troops, except Vince's bridge is down. He gets there, Texas Army, or Texas Cavalry is right on his tail. Some of his guys jump in the water and wade across, get stuck in the gumbo soil. If any of you walked around Texas, this part of Texas anyway, when it's wet, it's like glue. And while they're struggling to get out, the Texans are going bam, 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 just picking them right off. Santa Ana wisely said, mm, I don't think I want to do that. So he we went and hid in a thicket because it was now getting dark. Next morning, he comes wandering out and he says, okay, now where am I? Let's see, the bridge is out, which way are my troops? And he got captured. Brought back to San Jacinto and surrendered to Sam Houston. And the war was over. Texas gained its independence. Now, there are three markers associated with this transaction. First is Vince's Bridge, the obstruction he couldn't cross. Second is the capture site, which is just right around the corner. And then they brought him back to uh, San Jacinto where there was a capitulation. All of these markers were placed before the Texas Historical Commission was created and before the uh, Texas, uh, the, the Internet uh, Historical Atlas was established. Therefore, none of these markers are on the Historical Atlas. So if you're surfing to find out about Texas history, it's not in that category of information. Now, that's right, we're cutting some of this. We can move on. The significance of Vince's Bridge is that as a direct result of its destruction, it's, whether it's real or not, imagine Santa Ana did not try to escape that night. It was captured the next day. Texas became a republic. However, like true historians, we just love to argue these little ancillary issues. Gee, whose idea was it? Um, what was the purpose of the destruction? Who destroyed it? Where was it? And who was it named for? And then, of course, what did it look like? This is the rendering on the back of the state seal of Texas. It's an unofficial side of the seal, but this is on the floor at the government complex in Austin. This is definitely not what Vince's Bridge looked like. Trust me. <laughs> Life is so much more complicated now, and I thought, well, okay, I'll go do an overlay marker to complement the DRT marker, San Jacinto Chapter of Dollars Republic marker. Um, and so I started researching Vince's Bridge. And lo and behold, I came up with at least six possible locations for the bridge, only one of which was over um, Vince's bio. So, okay, where is the bio? Let me run down some of those candidates. Okay, well, of course, the first one, okay, first I'm going to orient you here. Buffalo Bio going down to the San Jacinto River at the far end. The, the line, the light brown line, I guess you'd say, is the well-worn path between Thompson's Crossing, Harrisburg, across Sims, cross fences, and to San Jacinto. Uh, the dotted line is the route Texas Army came, crossed 
uh, Buffalo Bio, crossed Vince's Bridge, and went to San Jacinto. So this is where the marker is right now. So it, it's, it's a logical place. Looks pretty good. So we'll keep that one. Oh, by the way, this is going to be a good study in mapology here. Now we've got, that was in, pardon me, in April 21st, John Forbes provided the axes to Def Smith to chop down the bridge. And in his official report, he said, for the purpose of destroying the bridge across Vince's bio. So early on, it's published Vince's bio. G.W. Hockley endorsed, countersigned that document. And the following year, in 1837, Robert Coleman wrote his popular pamphlet about Sam Houston <laughs> called Houston Displayed. There's some good facts in there. And he confirms also Buffalo Bio, uh, Vince's bio. The second one is Sims bio. Veteran Charles Shane's narrative of the campaign was published in the Louisville Journal in June 30, 1836, just a couple of months after the battle. He states, we went back and crossed the bridge that crosses Sims bio. We went back. Well, we'll get back to that. We're going to talk a little more about him in a few minutes. Um, Raymond Martinez Cairo, the Secretary of Santa Ana in 1837, published his report and in which he said, we, that Santa Ana Coast and the fleeing cavalry, continued at full speed until we reached the bridge on the Brazos, eight miles away, but only to find it burnt. Okay, map. Brazos River, eight miles. Actually, the Brazos River is 36 miles from the battleground. Fences Bridge is eight miles. Mm -hmm. So which one was it? OK. In 1915, Randolph Clark, a founder of Texas Christian University, stated in a speech on San Jacinto Day, Vince's Bridge over the San Jacinto River and its destruction by Deaf Smith immediately preceding the Memorial Battle of San Jacinto are myths of Texas history. Okay, map quiz. If it was over the San Jacinto River, and that's just that little section over there is where the San Jacinto, don't you, isn't he going the opposite direction where his troops are? It wouldn't make a lot of sense, so I would put that in the question mark pile. And this is one of my favorite. In 2004, H.W. Brands published Lone Star Nation, in which he identified Vince's bridge on page 459, check me out here, the bridge over Buffalo Bile that was to be his, that is Santa Ana's escape route. Well, if you cross Buffalo Bile, he's again going in the opposite. His troops are down here, and he's going north. In, 1830, in 1937, the memoirs of Antonio Machacha was published. Veteran Machacha was, uh, died in 1879, but it took almost 50 years to get his, his memoirs published. And he stated, proceeded very early the same morning to the bridge at Harrisburg, and at 7 a.m. crossed it. Well, Harrisburg is at the confluence of Buffalo Bio and Bray's Bio. He talks about crossing Buffalo Bio earlier, so are we now crossing Bray's Bio? And what direction is that relative to San Jacinto? So here's our candidates, OK? Well, trust me on this, and we'll, we'll go to it in a few minutes. Most of the research into primary documents shows that uh, the, the, these are the witnesses that the Vince's Bridge was over Vince's bio and William Vince's League. So the other five locations have been pretty well neglected. Rightly so, because there's not a lot of support for them. Recently, however, the Southwestern Historical Quarterly and the New Handbook of Texas decided, gee, maybe it's over Sims Bio. And this is where the problem starts, because Although it's a logical location, it's on the road to San Jacinto, the Texas Historical Commission decided that, oh, well, that's a good idea. I think we'll adopt that too. But if you do research into the primary documents, 
That's not what you're going to find. In fact, um, my, my numbers are something like 85% for Vince, 12% for Sims, and 6% for Brazos River. Let's go with the little, give you a little more background area. This is uh, the Platts, or the, the leagues in early Texas. The yellow ones, the colored ones, are the Vince brothers. In 1822, the Vince brothers came as part of Stephen F. Austin's um, old 300. William partnered with his sister Susan, built a, uh, got the league, William Vince League, through which Vince's bio travels. Uh, brother Allen partnered with Moses Callahan, got the league on the west side closer to Harrisburg. And it was the Callahan Vince League, and that's the one that has Sims through the middle of it. Robert and uh, Richard partnered, got another tract of land on the opposite side of Buffalo Bio, and Brother John came along. They were speculating in land is what they were doing. And William Vince built a house next to Vince's bio and what we'll discuss is Vince's bridge, and the family lived there. In 1833, uh, Duluth Rose Harris wrote about the Vince brothers, Alan, William, Robert, and Richard lived at the bridge on Vince's bio. Their sisters, Miss Susan, kept house for them. So we don't know. No. So when I submitted my application, oh, and this, this is sort of what the house looked like. It was a double log, what they call a double log cabin. This is out at the George Ranch, but it was basically what the cabin looked like. It would be located now about where, fairly close to where the Washburn Tunnel is just for put it in perspective. When I submitted the application to the Texas Historical Commission, I cited 13 primary sources that stated uh, Vince's bio, one government source. There were 10 narratives that by doing a little mapology, we cross below Sims, then we cross the bridge, that you'll know that they were talking about Vince's bridge, Vince's bio. Also a couple, two government uh, documents that would support that. Uh, Two sources identified it over Sims bio and one source over the Brasses. So it seemed to me that Vince's was the location. However, the proposed narrative came back stating, the location has been debated since the years following the battle. Since scholars place it across either Sims or Vince's bio, both of which cross lands owned at the time by the Vince brothers. I'm thinking, what debate? What a scholar's got to do with this, I'm talking primary sources here. So repeated requests to the Texas Historical Commission for, okay, is this a peer review? Okay. What did they find that I didn't find? I'm wide open. I'll tell you, I'll put it wherever it belongs. I just need to know where does it belong. I got no answer. So I started thinking about it. And let me skip a couple slides here. Now, I mean, I know I've got to get these. I've got to get these slides. Okay, quick. Vince, William Vince survey. It's the dark green. The dark red dotted line is the road to San Jacinto during wet weather. Uh, during dry weather, you can see the light dotted lines that go through the word William Vince. It was a small stream. You could go straight over it, not a problem. But when it was wet, you couldn't go straight across it because it would take too long, too long to get there. So you would go up over the little bridge that William Vince built. There was no government <coughs> road building or bridge, bu bridge building in those days. So the brothers just built a simple little bridge to get from one side of their property. This is Ballard's sketch in, in 1845, I believe it was, outside of San Antonio of a small bridge. And my money would be, this is more what Vince Bridge looked like instead of the backside of the Texas State Seal. Now, uh, Alan Vince, on the other hand, had the track that's two colors over here. Uh, when, uh, uh, Moses Callahan died almost immediately after they got the land, so Alan Vince says, okay, I'm going to buy his half, so he wrote off to his brother, uh, his father first in Washington, in the United States, and got a deed. Then later on, he wrote off to his brother and got a deed, but under Mexican settlement law, only Mexican citizens can inherit. So those two deeds didn't work at all in transferring title. And 
Directly north of him is the Ezekiel Thomas League. Well, as it turned out, Ezekiel Thomas was a relative of Moses Callahan. He too had died, but his children inherited the land. Alan Vince took the west half, which was closer to um, Harrisburg and obviously worth more money because of its proximity, and the heirs took the east half. Now, you'll notice the, the double green line there on Sims's bio. That's about the location where the bridge would have been. That's the logical location for it. It really wasn't on Alan Vince's half, or maybe it was on the boundary of it, but what benefit is it to Alan Vince going to the east when he's trying to market his land to the west? Now, I thought, okay, Texas Historical Commission uh, obviously knows something I don't know. So I went back and said, all right, let's correct that. Let's go do some more research. So I went and did some more research. I found some more primary sources. And I came back with 81% in support of Vince's Bridge, 12% for Sims Bio, and 7% for the Brazos River. Well, okay, you know, I was right on the primary sources, but maybe the scholars knew something that I didn't know. Maybe they knew some primary sources that I didn't know. So I started with Jenkins' basic Texas books and researched 49 Texas scholars. I'm sorry, uh, Steve Moore, I didn't include your book, but I knew which side it would go on. Anyway, eliminating those that uh, did not uh, mention the bridge uh, or the bio, are those that said, according to such and such scholar, it was. So there's, you know, they're not doing any research, they're just dependent on someone else. I eliminated those and the results came out to be 85% for Vince's bio, 12% for Sims, and 3% for the Brazos River. I'm not getting it. I'm dense here. You know, the, the Historical Commission came back and said there was a debate I have yet to find that debate. So how did the debate start? Well, you know, what's its genesis? Well, in 1965, George Charlton, a lawyer, much like myself, much like Jeff, <laughs> uh, wrote an article in the Southwestern Historical Quarterly titled Vince's Bridge, question mark, the San Jacinto campaign. Charlton's premise was Sims is a bigger body of water. It would have been harder to get across Sims. Vince's bio is a little creek. It's not, it's not worth even thinking about. The bridge must have been across Sims' bio. What he did, instead of looking at the facts to come to a conclusion, he started with a conclusion. And that's what his research did, start with a conclusion. If someone disagreed with him, he would either, as you will see, omit key parts of their testimony or simply say, oh, gee, they're confused. They didn't know. They meant Alan Vince, and he, had, he owned all of the Vince and Callahan survey, and therefore it meant Sims Bio because that's where Callahan, uh, Carlton was going the whole time. So Vince's bridge referred to Alan Vince, not William Vince, ergo, Galley and Vince, just as I was saying. So it must have been Sims Bio, okay? Um, not, you know, and we showed earlier that Alan Vince never really did own all of it. In March of 1836, William Fairfax Gray visited at the Vince home and reported in his diary, the Vince's own one and a half leagues. So, uh, going as close to a half a mile as Harrisburg. So he's acknowledging the whole William Vince League and the half uh, Moses Callahan League. Now, Charlton also said that Delgado reported that he had ordered, he was ordered to burn Harrisburg. The march was delayed, this is key, the march was delayed until 7 p.m. when they encountered a narrow bridge that they couldn't cross. Therefore, that was Sims Bio. Had he read all of Charlton's, uh, I had read all of Delgado's report. Delgado said, at 3 p.m., we started from Harrisburg for New Washington. It was nearly dark. 
when, he fit, when we finished crossing the bio. He left out that sentence. It was nearly dark when we crossed crossing the bio. At 7 p.m., we, we resumed our march, found it impossible for drought mules to cross a narrow bridge, rendered still more dangerous by darkness. Okay? Look at your map. If Delgado says we crossed one bio and then we came to the bridge, Sims bio is the first, Vince's bio is the second. So, Delgado, so uh, Charlton just sort of left out that little connecting part. According to uh, Frank uh, Lubbock in his book, he said, I rented the Allen Place on the river, on the bio of the same name. Charlton interprets this as Allen Fence's house on Sims bio because that's what um, uh, Allen owned at the time. He also, Charlton states, a search of the deed records of Harris County does not show that Allen Vince ever owned any land on the William Vince survey. Therefore, it couldn't have been the William Vince house and it couldn't have been Vince's bio. However, um, I hope Charlton wasn't my lawyer. Uh, had he looked at book A, page 418, he would have discovered that Allen and Susan Vince inherited the William Vince survey in 1837, they sold it to Meriwether Smith on uh, June the 28th, 1837. Smith died shortly after that, hadn't paid for the land, the land came back to the Vinces, and Allen uh, rented the home place to Frank Lubbock. Again, the William Vince cabin, because he now owned the William Vince cabin. And the last example is a cites Duluth Rose Harris during the runaway scrape when she says, first night near Harrisburg, next day we crossed Vince's Bridge and arrived at San Jacinto. Well, if Sims Bio is a difficult crossing, you know the thing he left out in the Delgado report, um, then certainly she would have mentioned that because it would have been part of the trauma of the runaway scrape, but she didn't. She just said Vince's Bridge. So obviously she meant Vince's Bridge over Sims Bio. However, if Charlton had read her whole report, we go back to that 1833 where she says the Vince brothers lived on Vince's, the bridge at Vince's bio, then, you know, she wouldn't, why would she repeat herself a couple of entries later when she's doing 1836? She's already identified where the bridge is. So Charlton only looked at that one section instead of researching the whole document. So after 124 years of sculpture, scholars, picking on scholars now, accepted Vince's bio as the location of the bridge, Charlton challenges the assumption based upon logic and adequate research in present day dry weather conditions. Well, no one took the bait. It's a very interesting concept, but no one took the bait until for 31 years. And then uh, in 1996, Philip Fry was assigned the responsibility of writing the Vince Bridge provision of the new handbook of Texas. The old handbook was written by Bailey Carroll and Walter Prescott Webb, and they said Vince's Bridge, a timber bridge over Vince's Bayou, was built sometime before 1836 by the Vince brothers, William Allen, Robert, and Richard. Fry threw it all out and replaced it with, controversy has surrounded Vince's Bridge since the Battle of San Jacinto when observers and participants gave conflicting accounts and location of the bridge. Recent investigation supports the statement of earlier writers who believe the bridge was located on Sims Bio. Key word, recent investigation, singular, not plural. And the only person since early on was George Charlton. And George Charlton happens to be in his bibliography. Uh, Fry goes on to say, but Sims is a larger body of water in that both Cairo and Santa Ana could hardly have mistaken a small stream for su such as Vince's bio as a much larger stream. So we're now back to the Charlton logic, bigger stream, smaller stream. And he cited in addition to Charlton he, um, I'm not French, 
uh, Frederick Bellardy, Chester Newell, and a primary account by Asma Turner. Okay. In, in 1838, two years after the battle, Chester Newell was the first scholar to mention Sims bio. Uh, but he didn't identify a source. So where did it come from? Is this, uh, according to John Jenkins, who lists Newell's book in his basic Texas handbook, he prefaces it with the remark, the, Texas, it, the history it presents <coughs> is secondhand. So if you don't know what the source is, why would you believe the person, you know? Because it's a bigger bio and everybody in Harrisburg knew it and maybe you had to go a ways to find that little bio that under flooded conditions required a bridge or had a bridge. The only <coughs> primary source that had been published by that time was Charles Shane. <coughs> now let's look back at Charles Shane. Shane said, uh, the next day we came to sight the Mexicans near uh, encamped on Buffalo Bible near San Jacinto. All right, there they are. The, the blue is the Texas, the green is the Mexican. They're at San Jacinto. And he goes on to say, and that night we went back and crossed the bridge that crosses Sims Bio. This is the first primary source of Sims Bio. Now, and, and perhaps I'm dense here, but you're camped opposite the Mexicans, you're waiting for coast to come. So that night you march back 10 miles you cross a bridge that at about this time, Coast was on, and you march back to San Jacinto. That's a full day's trip right there. And then you fight a battle that day. I would put that in a question mark category. But then maybe Newell didn't have a map. Okay. So this is how the chain of events went. Oh, no. Let's go back. I didn't mention Frederick Gallardi. He wrote about the Texas Revolution two years after Newell did. And he also said that the bridge was over Sims Bio. John Jenkins says in Texas uh, basic books, basic Texas books, much of the material is plagiarized from Charles Newell's History of the Revolution. So what we have here is not a second scholar, but this is a duplicate of Newell. Fry would have been much better in his credits if he had said, Chester Newell, Chester Newell, instead of trying to smoke and mirrors, making us think that there were two scholars that now have now agreed to this topic. The final thing he cited, a primary source, was that the, the um, uh, narrative of Asma Turner. And Asma Turner says specifically that Santa Ana was captured near Sims Bio. He was captured near Sims Bio. It doesn't say the bridge was over Sims Bio. It says nothing about a bridge. Santa Ana was captured. Well, even Santa Ana says, hey, I waded through the water on the other side. Some question to that. But that he said it. And if he did, okay, he would have been over near the Sims when he was captured. So there's no proof here. This is sort of an assumption, sort of a, um, an inference, not a fact. Two-minute warning, okay. So this follow this chain of reasoning here, uh, sort of like the blind leading the blind, I think. It seems that an interesting idea has been molded into a historical truth. Uh, and so, and when I was started my application, I was perfectly willing to say Sims Bio. It sounded really interesting. Margaret Henson was saying, hey, that sounds like a good location. But when you do the research, it's not there. These other people, have built upon others without going back to the primary. And I think perhaps I might have found out how this happened. The internet is an excellent tool. There is so much out there now that we have access to that we have ever had access to. But one of its weaknesses is primary sources. Primary sources, there's not a lot of them out there. There's a bunch of them, but not a lot of them. So it's easy for an armchair historian to go, push the button, Vince's bridge. What do we come up with? The very first entry, Handbook of Texas Online, Philip Fry. So obviously now we've got Charlton's art, uh, article, we have Fry, we have two scholars. 
So we got a trend going here. And if you look at the narrative that THC proposed, it was very similar to Fry's narratives, the same basic concepts. And after all, uh, these are prestigious uh, institutions of higher learning that obviously have it right. But they don't have it right because they didn't do their research. And this is very, very dangerous. You know, I, I, I apologize to the Historical Commission, the, the Texas State Historical Association that are here today. But these agencies are under a lot of pressure. The, our government does not find, fund them fully. So they're trying to do a job short staffed. Uh, when they went online, they said, hey, if we make mistakes, please let us know and we'll make corrections. Okay, in 2000, I started sending them. They haven't been changed yet. I was in Austin a couple years ago and I said, hey, what's going on? Oh, well, you see, we're underfunded. We don't have anyone to do the research to see if what you tell us is correct. And even if it is correct, we don't have webmasters. We can't put it on the internet, so we can't change it. I hate to say it, but maybe they should stop publishing until they can do their job right. I know they want to do it right. And the Texas Historical Commission is the one that wants to now acquire 21 state historical parks and operate it. They can't do the job they're doing right now, and they want to take on more. It's, it's scary. I have got letting off. Uh, uh, a fatal cause. Okay. I will skip. The next two points, but I do. I want to point out one. I want to point out two things. Number one, in your packet there are two flyers. One is for the map exhibit at the San Jacinto Museum of History. It's an excellent exhibit. They uh, released a, re, a uh, uh, they redid the the um, winter's map. This is an earlier version of it. On it, it says that burnt the bridge on Sims Bio. Newspaper said, well, he did the map and he did the markers in 1901. The map is the basis for the marker. Well, if the map is the basis for the marker, it says Sims Bio, maybe that's right. But actually in 1901, when Winters walked the field and set marker, 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 three days later, he did an interview. It was published in the Southwestern Historical Quarterly. And he said not only that, that the bridge was Vince's bio, but we crossed Buffalo bio below the mouth of Sims. Take your map. Again, if you cross below Sims, you're not going to go back to the west to cross a bridge on Sims and then turn around and go back to the east to San Jacinto. And the last, someone said, well, you, you told us where Sims, where Vince's bridge is not. Well, tell me where it is. So there's a map in your your packet there, so you can go find it yourself. It is a little difficult to find it. Um, where was the bridge exactly? Well, you know, that's the approximate location where the marker is. Done a little research. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like Charlton, but I'm going to start with um, an idea instead of finish with one. I think it's about 150 yards downstream towards the mouth. Old topos make it look, that's very good location. Right now, if it subsides and everything, you really can't look at it. But if y'all are really serious and you want to know exactly where it is, well, gee, we got Greg Dimmick and got some Texas archeologists here. Hey, let's all pony up a little money and they'll go find it for us. Thank you very much. It's yours.